on this week's episode, Amos had some soju BS. Yeah, and I also christened the bull. I think both of those for what you will. I had three things on repeat. Yeah, was one of them Starfighter? Um, yeah, but wasn't in my living room. Oh, that's unfortunate. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 247 for Thursday, the 23rd of April, 2020. I'm Amos, that's Kent. This is a show where two lifelong friends celebrate all things geek and the audience did not hear the intro audio. Ha <laughs> ha, because uh, I suck. Ha, <laughs> what's going on? Hey, <laughs> we, we had such a smooth uh, pre-show that, you know, we had to screw something up because I- we're armed. Right, yeah, no, everything was like, we didn't have to like second check anything or whatever, like it was just... Yeah, everything was going smooth until... Until it wasn't. In, until the actual show started. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, hey, man, how you been, dude? It's been a, it's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I think we've only had one actual episode of RMP between uh, the last Amos appearance and, and this one. Yeah. Uh, but I've been doing a lot of RMP extra in the meantime. Uh, I haven't missed a week in between. Um so I've I've actually so in the the show notes I wrote three things on repeat about um, what my week has been like, and it kind of feels like Groundhog's Day because I've done three things over and over and over and over again. Those three things are I I, I, I get up and I and I telework, which basically consists of answering phone calls and checking my email uh, throughout the the like mid morning to like late afternoon. Right. Um, and then I'm either depending on the, the, well, it varies based on the day, I guess. But I either go directly into RMP prep because I'm I'm either developing a concept or setting up some kind of a set or uh, putting together notes or something like that. And then in the evening I'll go into playing with my um, at games Legends Ultimate Arcade Machine. Mm. Or if it's not on one of those days. I will get off of work and I'll play my arcade machine and then I'll do RMP prep after that. Um, so, th- and that's, that's pretty much been my, my last, like, I don't know, three weeks. Uh, what about you, man? It's, it's been a minute since we've heard from you. What's, what's going on? I am spending a lot of time with the family, uh, doing a lot of research for a lot of big projects. Uh, I just talked to a very special idol of mine today about starting a new project, working directly with that person. So, uh, really excited about that stuff. Just minor stuff, like nothing, nothing really big. I had a, I had this big thing planned for this whole summer that was going to take up so much of my time. And it, what's happening instead is I've got tons of little stuff that's just getting knocked out and taken care of. And it's been uh, it's been fantabulous. Um, I did make two batches of soju, you know, c- Kool Aid, uh, some fruity flavors, and uh, soju. So you didn't actually distill the soju yourself. You, no. you had some soju and you you created a concoction with it. Right. And, and I don't talk, I'm not talking about soju like, you know, whatever company makes soju in Colorado or some shit. I'm talking about soju I brought back from Korea. Mm. Combat bottles of soju. Uh, mixed that in. And the kids and I last night and my and my, my sister-in-law, we played bullshit. They'd never played bullshit before. Oh, so bullshit. Yes. We played concept. bullshit with soju. And none of us got too hammered up because I didn't know we only had two batches and it was five people, but, uh, they got to, they got to feel the love of the soju, how it's nice and, and comfortable as it's going in. And then makes you one and makes you rethink life decisions as you're standing up to go to the bathroom. Um, so that was awesome. Uh, the kids had never played, bull- they'd never played any drinking games at all ever. And that was, uh, eye opening to them. So Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. They're they're brand new to this idea of consuming alcohol. So, yeah, uh, son, my son David, he didn't didn't take part. Uh, he was too busy playing Minecraft. He told us he'd get with us later, and I was like, that's not how this works. Um, and uh, so my my three daughters, three older daughters, the twins and Amber, we sat around and had some soju and played cards. That uh, that sounds like a a great evening, actually. It it really was, and that was last night. So yeah. <laughs> um also uh did the uh, did i i think i told you i got the uh not grim valor what's the other game uh the big box game oh um 
Yep. I do not remember the the name of it, but you told me that you've got a like a box, like a organization. Or, box. Yes, I got that, and that has turned out splendidly. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, still haven't played the game because now all the kids are back doing school stuff all day long, and then at night everybody's doing their own thing. But uh, probably try to tackle that this weekend and see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, that thing was a lot of that was a lot of fun to put together. It took me about eight hours to put it together, all told. Um, gluing all the pieces together and stuff like that. It was like a huge puzzle. It was, it was amazing. So that was a lot of fun. But yeah, just tackling little projects like that. That's been that's been most of it. We'll get into a little bit uh, more specifics on what corn life has been for us a little later. But that, that's that's the gist of it. Yeah. Uh, so I did something like super, super freaking geeky the other day. Uh, so I, I've mentioned several times on this show already that I've got an arcade machine. And um, I actually did a, an RMP extra stream from the machine mm-hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so, do you remember the the movie The Last Starfighter? Yes. So the premise of the movie, for those that, that don't know, it's a, a teenage boy growing up in a trailer park, kind of dead end life, doesn't have a lot going on for him. But there's an arcade machine in the trailer park that he plays, and he gets really, really, really good at. And he has a pretty good looking girlfriend. That is true. That is at, true. at least according to my eight year old standards in the eighties. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this movie, I think was like 1984 or something like that. Yep. Um, something like so, that. So he's playing this arcade game, Starfighter, and he beats the high score on the machine. So like shatters the record. Right. And, uh, he, he thought, oh, you know, this is the most exciting thing that's happened in the trailer park. I beat this high score. Like he had like all the residents watching him beat this score and whatnot, which was a big deal to him. Uh, but it turns out that the video game was not just a video game. It was a test to become a real life starfighter and fight some intergalactic war <laughs> like light years away. And um, anyway, so it's basically like a. a a dream of mine when I was a kid to be Alex Rogan, the character in the movie Mm -hmm. to get good at a video game and then like be recruited to be like to do it in real life. Greetings starfighter. Yes. Yes. Um, so anyway, so the arcade game in the movie was never actually produced. Uh, the main reason is that the technology in the early eighties didn't exist to have a game that was as complex, especially the graphics, uh, of the game at the time. So in the meantime, uh, an independent developer, uh, this is uh, five ish years ago, probably uh, made the actual game uh, based on the movie. It, it, it's a, uh, th- there is a free download and I, I'll be sure to get this in the show notes, um, but it is a windows based game. Uh, that's, that's the game from the movie. And um, I have yet to, to get a ROM for the machine yeah, to play it as an arcade, uh, an arcade game. Um, but I found footage of it and, uh, I put it on my arcade machine as a, you know, like an attract video. Mm-hmm. So like you, you walk into an arcade and you've got all, you know, all the machines are like showing you stuff. Um, anyway, so I, I, um, took video from my iPhone of of my machine in attract mode with with a uh, starfighter on it and um, I, th- I thought it was like the geekiest like i had like the the biggest nerd boner uh putting this thing together and then like watching my sh- machine uh play all of this from from the all last right. and and so now we are going to uh, prepare yourselves we're about to watch kent's video game boner <laughs> Is there sound? You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Zor and the Colbert Armada. Well, apparently yes. they didn't hear the audio on that either, so I just suck at life, but that was pretty cool. 
yeah so and it goes on and on and uh you get to see actual gameplay and it goes through the whole thing of um you know when the alien shows up and and the machine starts like getting jacked up and it like transforms the alien into like his true form and all that kind of stuff right well all of that's on on this this like the full form video as well that's awesome um but yeah um so much fun to put that together and and man i i can't wait to have an actual rom of that game to play well i mean that's gonna be that that that, that's gonna be one of those rmp specials right um yeah for sure so so i've been doing rmp extras uh there's a lot of 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 like game footage and a bunch of like uh extra behind the scenes footage uh for rmp that uh patrons can get their hands on yep if they all they got to do is all all that anyone's got to do is go over to patreon.com slash ritual misery sign up you can do it completely free uh Right now, we're not charging anybody. Right. So you, you could you could pledge a thousand dollars if you wanted to, and you get all of the benefits, and you don't you don't get charged anything. You pay yep. zero dollars. So, so w- what I would suggest is that everybody, if you're not already, go sign up Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery for a dollar an episode or a dollar a month. Rather, mm-hmm. you could even like you can cap it wherever you want to cap it, and. Uh, get all of the get access to all of the patron goodies and we're still not going to charge you what what, why the heck would we have a patreon campaign and not charge people amos uh well so two things real quick one i want to thank you for the raid for uh uh tucson sam i know that's tuscan sam that i i I know i just i give up that's what i'm going with and uh the second point would be that uh we don't do this for a living. There are creators out there that do it for a living. We do it for a little extra cash to spend on new gear or you know things like this. Um travel to events, stuff like that, uh t-shirts, whatever. And we don't need that money right now. So we paused our account or paused our our patrons in in April. We're going to pause them again in May. Um because well that's just that's just how it has to go. Uh, B. Coford says, uh, wait, what What travel? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember once upon a time that travel was a thing. Yeah, we were supposed to be at South By. Of course, can't end up going, but then there's a limited turnout because of all the travel stuff. So um, now we just got that money banked. It's just sitting in a pocket. And the next trip would be in September going out to Cincinnati, but we're currently waiting for that to be canceled as well. So... We'll figure something out. Uh, one of these big, cl- bigger uh, groups have meetups all the time, and we'll jump on one of those and make sure that happens. But yeah, that's what our patrons go to, and we don't need that right now. Like we're not. It's not. It's not causing us to starve. So, um, yeah, that's 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 why we don't need it right now. Other people do. So take that money that you would be giving us and give it to somebody else. But go ahead and sign up for ours because when we do kick back in, we are gonna be using that money for travel. Yeah, and it will we'll be sure to warn all the patrons before we charge again. Uh, but again, that's patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yep. Hey, man, um, I did a couple things this uh, this week that I thought were pretty fucking exciting. I've been talking a long time. I've been trying to convince you for a long time to jump on the Hue train so you can get some different lights and shit in your, in your office there. And I took the big plunge. I got the spotlights, and so now the, you can see the purple and the greens a little bit better on my video. And I transferred those lights out to the living room. I got a Hue Play, which is a HDMI device that hooks up, you know, it's basically an HDMI inline device. You can put up to four HDMI devices in there, and then that device hooks up to your TV. And it takes whatever input you're giving it and makes the Hue lights in that room fluctuate and change colors according to what's whatever's on the TV. I got that all hooked up. So now the, all the lights in the living room are hue lights and you play a movie and a big explosion happens. The whole room glows orange. Wow. That's there's a, cool. there's a laser duel, you know, like a lightsaber duel and you can see the reds and the blues flashing around the room uh, in, in sync with the lightsabers. It's, it's not for everybody. My sister-in-law finds it very distracting, but she's got like whatever the next level is beyond ADHD. She's got that. Ah, uh. Uh, to me, I when, when it's set in middle brightness and and the the middle mode because you can you can set the extremity like how how much it's going to fluctuate and change and how fast and all that. Um, it's it's pretty awesome and I really enjoyed it, especially on animated movies because there's lots of color. 
Like every like we played the the Lego movie and it was just like there's so many colors and all the lights are are taking it, it's it's really cool. Uh, I got a couple light bars on the way that are gonna go behind the TV to shine on the wall behind it to give it a little bit more uh, ambiance to it. And uh, yeah, it's really really freaking sweet. And I will be post once I get everything set up. Once I get those other light bars, I will be posting a video um, to probably to probably to the patrons. Probably a free video to the patrons to show my setup with the TV show and everything else. It's really cool. And I'll try to do a better job than the schmucks on YouTube that have shown demonstrations of it so far. So, Great. yeah. And you can sync it to music too. So like you get a slow song, it's like a piano song. It's just got little twinkles here and there. Then you play something like with a big driving bass and it's just like, boom, 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 boom. It's, it's oh pretty fucking God. awesome. So, yeah. So do, so yeah, it's like being in a club. It 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 kind of is. It kind of is. Yeah. Now I just need a nice stereo to put in there, some surround sound, and be all about it. Yeah. No, that sounds freaking awesome, dude. Yeah. So that I did that, uh, and then I have uh, also in that shipment whenever it arrives. I got some some light panels for my room in here for my office to liven that up a little bit too. So we'll see what what I can do with that. They have not arrived yet, and actually, this should be pointed up a little bit more so you can see that ledge because that's where I plan on putting them. So. Okay. Yeah, right about right about there or so. Um, also rearranged my office and all my bookshelf is behind me as per Tom Merritt's uh, recommendation. Not just copying him, but he actually told me, put your bookshelf behind you. It'll give you more to talk about. And uh, I put my, my, my pops up there, my Funkos, all in the boxes. They're still in the boxes because I ha don't have a permanent place to put them yet. So they just stack up nicer when they're in their boxes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, uh, but yeah, not a collector. Well, I'm a collector. I'm not a... What do we what do we call it? Can't uh, we're not collectors. We're uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know what we call it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we're, like I've I've got I've got a small pop collection as well. Uh, yeah. Video viewers, I don't know if you can see some of them on my shelf. Um, but yeah, I don't keep them in boxes. I I take them out. I I will pose play, them. Some play with them. <laughs> play with them. Yeah, I play with my toys. Um, so I mean, they're definitely not. You know. I'm not going to keep them in the boxes like for music, you know, keep them museum level pristine and all of that. Right. Sort of no, that's most of my boxes are trashed anyway because I, I get them when they're like half off. Yeah. Well, so. and the thing about Funko Pops, like the, the boxes themselves are decorative and they actually look pretty nice in the box as well. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's either or it's, it's personal preference to me, but like if I had, um, uh, like for example, when I was a, you know, a much younger person, a child slash teenager, and I had like Star Wars toys and whatnot, like I would open them up and play with them. Like right. I wasn't in, about to keep them in the package and display them. Like that to me is just ridiculous. There's a certain mark of privilege that I'm not comfortable with, but taking things and buying them just to keep them in pristine, unplayed condition and not using them for the purpose of which they were used. Or right. In, in which they were built. Right, right. right. And finally, uh, my last bit of news is the other night, as Kent knows, because he called me or I called him, one or the other, uh, Monday, but it was Monday night. I went out to the backyard and christened my bong. We didn't put a little pinch of the old uh, cannabis in there. And finally, you know, I actually enjoyed my bong for the first time. And I got to tell you, man, back in the day, you'd have to smoke an entire joint to be able to like really feel like, me. you know, you and I could split a joint and we'd be good. Um, but just for, for hypothetically, yeah, for, for general purposes though, like you smoke a joint and you're, you're good, but you know, you get too many people sharing it and you're, you're not, I put just a pinch of shit in the bowl and I was good <laughs> and holy shit. I've never slept so good in my life. <sighs> well, that's yeah. good. That's good. Uh, perhaps one of these days I can, uh, experience what that's like. That'd be nice. Um, be, yeah, I mean, be it'd nice. be, uh, who knows? I would have to have a different employer, uh, for that to take place. Yes. And for, and for the record, I did that in the backyard by myself, then came inside, put everything away. Then went upstairs. Uh, uh, yeah. I went upstairs through my clothes in the laundry and got a shower, brushed my teeth just so the family could stand to be around me. So <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's, it's not something I can just do whenever. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was an interesting time. Yeah. Right on. Uh, you know what else is interesting? What's that? Games. Games? Like Kent's games? It's been a while since I've done one. 
Yeah, it has. Do you have one prepared for this week? I do. Then I better hit the button. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. 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 And I figured out my audio problem. Yesterday was Earth Day. Did you know that? Uh, I, I, I think I did. <laughs> the only reason I knew that yesterday was Earth Day is I was trying to figure out what today's game was going to be. And I just opened up Google and Google just told me <laughs> today's Earth Day. It's like, OK, cool. I'll make a, a quiz about the Earth. Oh, like I, I call this one. Happy Earth Day to you. Happy Earth Day to you. Exactly. I see, I see what you did there. Right. Yep. Okay. It's like a second level pun. This is a true and false quiz. I think it's pretty easy. Uh, and we're going to find out how you can do it. It's 10 so, questions, true or false. So the person that knows the answers thinks it's pretty easy to choose one of two answers. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's going to be easy for you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So let's see how you do. All right. Uh, number one, true or false? The first Earth Day was 50 years ago. Sounds good. True. Sure, why not? All right. Uh, all right. So, Earth Day is our world's birthday. True or false? False. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, uh, we don't know that it's false, but we can't possibly presume that it's true. Right. And I just realized I pushed the wrong button. At least, uh, at least they're hearing your sounders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously it's not the Earth's birthday. We can't know that. Um, and if it was, we just established that Earth Day is 50 years old. That would mean the Earth is 50 years old. So. <laughs> Crystal Rock says, happy 20, 2020th birthday, Earth. <laughs> also false. <laughs> okay. I, I, I can't... Uh... You know me and my love of conspiracy, of all things conspiracy. I have been doing a lot of viewing and watching. No, even even Christ was 32 years older than us. It'd be his 2052nd birthday. Anyway, I have been watching a lot of conspiracy. I don't say conspiracy theories. They're, how do, how do I put this? They're ancient civilization hypotheses. Okay. Because that's, I think that's more accurate than conspiracy theories. Because really, the the whole cover up aspect of things like this don't really turn, don't really get me going. It's the 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 thought process of like where did the where did the pyramids really come from? You know, oh, okay. like something doesn't add up there. Now, does it have to be an ancient civilization? No, but something of the common mythology of how they were built when we were taught as a kids uh, that doesn't add up. So like looking into that, why is there a line around the earth? that's hundred kilometers wide that covers like 90% of earth's uh, megalithic ancient structures. Like there's, there's certain things, you know, and of course they can all be explained away. I've been going down that rabbit hole lately. Oh my God. It's so much fun. Number three, <laughs> the earth is flat. Uh, only from a very small perspective of human height. So true or false? It's definitely false. Um, yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. Um, I almost had the quiz take a turn from this point and make it about conspiracy theories, uh, and I I didn't. I I decided to just make it all about the Earth. <laughs> um, there is a there's a radio station. I'll have to I'll have to find the link for it. There's a radio station in Austin that has a, a recurring guest called flat earth Andy. And he comes on to talk about his flat earth conspiracy. And they have people on like, Oh, I don't know, like astronauts <laughs> to debate with him. <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. Um, all right. Number four. I think that's what the flat earth thing is there. This is just a bunch of people that want NASA to pay for them to fly up into space to see with their own eyes that it's actually round. They're like, oh, if I if I say it loud enough, they'll eventually take me up there just to prove me wrong. 
I think that's the real conspiracy. I mean, maybe that's a long shot, though. Right. But, I, I guess it's it's more likely that that would happen than to find out that the Earth is flat. Right. I mean, they're playing their odds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Earth's core is as hot as the sun's surface. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, I'm going to say n- false. I think it's a little bit. Oh, no, it's about the same. It's roughly the same. 5,500 Kelvin? Some, yeah, something like that. That sounds that sounds pretty close. Um, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. The Earth Earth is basically a, a big thermal, like a, a a thermonuclear reactor, basically. Oh, uh, thank you, Dusong and Wild, for the uh, hundred cheer points there. The hundred uh, uh, bits. Thanks for the bits, man. Um, all right, number five. A magnitude twelve earthquake would split the Earth in half. No. 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 What, what, how? How would that? No. no uh, how? Uh, uh, okay. So the 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 math is something like like every um like every number on the Richter scale is, is basically double. It's an order of magnitude number. above the next one. Yeah. Or so, yeah. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So once so, you reach so uh, 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 so a magnitude thirteen earthquake would be the the fault line would have to be larger than the than the width of the planet itself. So all right, I'm, well, I'm wins. going to accept that because it would take too much energy to argue it. <laughs> Just to find out that you'd be wrong, and and now we're back to flat Earth theory. <laughs> Uh yeah all right so uh Earth- Sam's pissed off he's he was told there'd be no math in this episode I don't know who told you that but uh hopefully they're right for the rest of the episode <laughs> all right Earth is estimated to be ten billion years old um so this is a floating number it's typically known to be about 13.8. So they round off to 14 billion years old, but there is some new scientific data that says it might actually be considerably older or younger, but the common theory, the the, the most common theory is about 13.8 billion years old. So I'm going to say false. Okay. I'll take your answer. Uh, but it's actually younger than that. It's like um, it's like four and a half billion years old or something. something oh, I'm old. sorry. Their universe is 13.8 billion years old. Yeah. The Earth may um, be considerably younger than that or yeah, considerably no, older. There, there's. I, I left the uh, I left the possibility open for you. Basically, you were going to get this one right no matter what. Um, I marked it as false because it's it's mostly in in scientific circles considered to be younger than that mm. uh, but also i worded it the earth is estimated to be depends on who you ask right so yeah. if you just said true i'd be like yeah fuck it you get it yeah somebody <laughs> some somebody estimated it to be that <laughs> right yeah and it was me just now <laughs> it was me as i answered the question i thought that was my estimate yeah all right uh number seven about 70 percent of the earth's surface is covered in water that's true all right uh, but, but get get this all of earth's surface is covered in air okay yes <laughs> this ipa might be a little stronger than i planned <laughs> all right earth takes exactly 24 hours to rotate false Uh, do you know exactly what it is? The, well, it depends on what you consider rotate. If you mean rotate on its own axis, it's one number. It's just a little bit shorter, no, a little bit longer than 24 hours. Um, but if you consider the rotation with an anchor point of the sun, so therefore think considering the rotation and the, uh, uh, the, the, the travel through space, it's actually a little bit longer than that, like a, another tenth of a second longer than that. So... It's yeah. There you go. It, 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 no, it's yeah, yeah. That's right. It's a little, little, just a touch longer than twenty four hours. Actually, wrong, wrong direction. It's just a touch less. It's just a touch 20, less. Twenty three hours, fifty six minutes, and four seconds. 
I know if you look at the correlation between the period of time for a day, you know, just one circ- uh, 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 rotation versus versus one circumnavigation of the sun, like those two numbers don't match up really at all. It's a fucking miracle we end up with 365 days in a year. Which leads me directly to number nine. <laughs> An Earth year is exactly 365 days. No. No, it's 300, 365.41? Uh, not too far off. Uh, 365.2564. Yeah, day. yeah, something like that. Yeah, which is uh, why we have leap year and things like that. Well, like we have that. a leap year every four years, unless it's on a hundred year mark, a century mark. We don't have a leap years on century marks. However, we will have a leap year on a century mark if it's also a millennium mark. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, that is correct. So the furthest extent of that rule that I know is what we experienced in 2000. It was the century mark, so we shouldn't have had a leap year, but it was a millennium mark, so we did. And I know it goes further than that, but fuck it. I don't. Yeah, know. there's, yeah. Astronomy, math, we're not going to go there. Look, I just figured out Easter not too long ago, and I still couldn't tell you what the fuck that is. It's about moons and, and zombies and stuff like that. <laughs> That's exactly right, actually. That's ding! <laughs> All right, your final question. <laughs> 5% of Earth's water is fresh water. 5% Ooh. of this water is fresh water. I'm going to say true. You're going with true. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually 3%. Uh, see, I knew it was like really fucking low. But liquid form water is even less than that. It's less than 1%. Right. Of the Earth's water is liquid fresh water. Right. And then if you take the ice uh, fresh water, it becomes the m- majority of what's left with the vaporized water being like the fucking tiniest little sliver. Yeah. 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 So, there's actually, yeah, there's very, very little like cloud, cloud water. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So not too bad. Uh, you did in fact beat the D this week with a seven out of 10. Hell yeah. Um, so, so good job on that. That means I beat the D and picked up a stroke. <laughs> that's, that's right. Oh, that's right. Uh, well done. Well done, sir. Excellent. Very fun game. I, I enjoyed that. That was, that was, you should have more games like that where it's like, uh, uh are, are you fucking sure? <laughs> <laughs> games that, that you don't suck at. Uh, I mean, that helps. <laughs> I, I, I thought I knew all of that and I still only got the seven out of 10. So whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can look at it the other way. You only missed three of them. Um, uh, fine. <laughs> in, in other news, uh, real quick in the chat real, uh, while, while we're about to discuss our next point in the chat, I want you to tell us the single most impacted aspect of your life for the quarantine. So if that's the you know food or how you ate, if that's travel, because you usually travel more, if that's seeing family, whatever the most impactful, not not like the most obvious, like obviously I'm not going anywhere, but the most impactful thing that has uh, has happened from the quarantine, go ahead and throw that in there and we'll get to those in just a minute. But um, Kent, I, wanna, I want you to say, other than what you talked about earlier, where it's kind of like a... a, a uh, repeated day, you know, a little groundhog day action. Yeah. What is the most impacted aspect of your life with the quarantine slash stay at home orders, whatever? Uh, I get a healthy amount of sleep. That is seriously like, I can't explain how big of a deal that is to me. I, I, during a work week, I generally get like three to four hours of sleep at night just because I, I am not a like, you know, go to bed at 9 p.m. kind of guy. Like I, my body just does not shut down. Right. I were, if I were to go to bed at let's say 10 o'clock in in the evening, and lay there with my eyes closed, with you know, lights off, nice calming music playing, like you know, all the things, right? Temperatures right. I will still lay there for probably two, three, sometimes like four hours before I fall asleep. Mm. Uh, and that's under great conditions. 
unless I'm just like either shit face drunk or just like wiped out tired because I've been up for a day and a half. Uh, but just like on a normal, like on a regular ass Tuesday, um, I don't sleep well. Uh, but now that I am teleworking and I don't have to be at a place at a certain time in the morning, I can basically just follow my my uh, own like uh, circadian cycle, fall asleep when I'm tired, get up when I'm ready to fucking get up. I mean, yes, I do still set an alarm so that I, you know, uh, actually get out of bed instead of just snooze until like four in the afternoon. Um, but I my alarm goes off and I'm not pissed off about it. I get up out of the bed and I, I go do what I do and, and, uh, log into my work computer. Mm. And it's been great. Like I've been getting like seven to, to eight hours of sleep every night. And it's been absolutely wonderful. <laughs> what about you, man? I, I'm going to go the opposite way. And this is really fun. So I don't have a daily job I have to be at like some people, but I do have obligations. Like my daughter has a Zoom meeting that she has to be with her teacher every every day or whatever, you know, like there's certain things that have to take place at certain times, even if it's not work related. I would say that my sleep, because I'm allowed more leniency in following my circadian rhythm, which I have roughly estimated to be a... Uh, 20 and eight cycle. So 20 hours of being awake with about eight hours of sleep. Um, right. I end up get, being the 20 hours awake, but not getting the eight hours of sleep. So mm-hmm. I've been sleeping worse because my wife has had more of a leniency in her sleep schedule as well. And working on projects, things like that. You know, if I start researching something and six hours later, I'm still digging into it. I just keep digging into it. Um, but yeah, sleep is is one of those aspects that's really, without the structure of the day to day life, my sleep has actually decreased. Mm. Now you don't you don't have small kids at home. You have kids that uh, can ma- basically manage themselves. Which yeah, we, they my my kids can wipe their own ass. Right, and I mean mine mine can too. They just can't make sure they're awake to get on Zoom call with their hair done. So. <laughs> Um, you know, if I was, a, if I was, if we were shitty parents, I guess it'd be a lot easier, but, uh, <laughs> but we, we insist that our seven year old have her hair done before she gets on a Skype call with all of her friends. Um, but yeah, the, I think sleep is actually the hardest part of all this. Although in, in a very close second, my wife has been home now for almost a month straight and there have been a few bad days, you know, where she's just not happy. Mm-hmm. Wives out there, pay attention. She's just not happy. But overall, she's had more time with the kids, with the littles, more time with the the middles, and more time with me. It, honestly, that's been that's been hellaciously awesome. I just wish I could really get to sleep. Although I will I will say, Kent, if you need a little help falling asleep during the week, have you ever tried THC? <laughs> it, uh, not an option. My current it, it it puts you straight to sleep if you let it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what we got in the chat room here. We uh, basically, uh, uh, well, B. Kilford is the only one that responded. Um, he says he's had problems with beer, getting having to go through the drive-through to get beer. I I don't think I have a drive-through uh, option for beer here. I do have a curbside pickup at a couple locations for beer. You need better beer. Uh, we've actually got pretty decent beer. No, just, now. just overall, the beer experience needs to be better where you are. Uh, right. Well, it's, it's getting a lot better. Um, uh, we've actually got tap rooms and things in town now, which is a <sighs> huge improvement from where we were, let's say even two years ago. Um, uh, yeah, the, the alcohol service in this town was, was almost nil. Now, last time I was in Alamogordo, which is given four years ago, five years ago. Mm-hmm. We drove through town and we counted all the places in which you can have a beer that was not an Applebee's or something long, like a you know Great American Restaurant type of environment, you know, where it's just beer. And right. we came up with like five. Oh, what the hell were you? Did you actually count a McDonald's and a gas station? No, no, no. We counted the Fry's grocery store by default um, because it's where you buy most of your beer. <laughs> Well, it's actually Lowe's, Lowe's Grocery. Lowe's Grocery. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. That would be a high estimate, I think. It was, it was like two bars, 
um, a, 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 a multifunction joint, the Lowe's, and then like a gas station or some shit like that. Like, <laughs> you know, they, they they didn't yell at you if you drank a beer as you were walking out the door. I mean, oh, it, it was okay. pitiful. It, all right. So if we're if we're including gas stations that won't yell at you for cracking open a beer on the way out the door, I mean, you could probably bump that up to like 10. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was sad. It was a sad. And I'm not a really a big beer drinker. It took me that, that whole 40 minutes we've been on stream to finish this IPA, which, by the way, the end of which ooh, I got to say. I need to get my hands on some of that beer. That sounds delicious. We well, need to come to Alaska. I got all kinds of fucking beer in here that you keep saying you need to get your hands on. Well, as soon as uh, travel is a thing, um, I might I might try to make my way up there. Uh, uh-huh. I know I've been saying that for how many years? How long you been up there north of the wall? Four. Yeah. So. Um. <laughs> We're closer now than we've ever been before, though. So there's that. That is true. <laughs> By default. Well, <laughs> Just a simple logic problem. And uh, for the record, I've been to your place like four times. Four times. I brought my kids and my wife. I brought I, my if mom. You, if you, I mean, if you count like every time you entered my home, like just like you went out into no. the backyard, came back in, if that counts as two. No. No. <laughs> You're silly. But. To be, but to be fair, like you were living in Texas for at least half of those, and yeah. I visited you in Texas as well. During all, right, all right, fine, I'll fucking give you that, jerk. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, we need to make we need to make visits uh, uh, a thing once once the travel restrictions are gone. Maybe maybe the patrons can make that happen, and we can make a big patron live special. That would be fantastic. I've I've got ideas. I do too, but you'd have to ring Steph because you can't enjoy some of them. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, all right, man. So, so quarantine's a thing. Um, in some places, it's a legal thing. Like you're absolutely mandated. All right, this cool sh- almost has like a banana flavor to it. Okay, I can see that. It's it's creamy. It tastes like a normal, like a normal ale, but it's got like a, it's almost like a banana cream flavor to it. I really want to know what color it is. Maybe it's just because I've been drinking that piss ass IPA. Yeah. After drinking a very dank IPA, um, pretty much any beer is going to taste sweet. <laughs> so that might be, uh, might be this one. I'm glad I just got to admit it on, uh, on Mike. Hey man, uh, quarantine is a big thing. Uh, we're not trying to get political here, but there are some real fucking idiots out there. And I had this link here that I'm going to bring up now because, well, why not? This is a BuzzFeed article. 33 signs from reopen protests across the U.S. that are 100% real. You can take all of that with a grain of salt, unless you're Kent, in which case you can take it with a grain of turmeric. (laughs) <laughs> right. But this is some funny shit that I just I just wanted to go through and share a couple of these because I can't like I can't fucking believe Americans right now. I can't believe humanity in general, but especially Americans. It blows well, me away. It, to be to be fair, I mean this is a this is a representative of like point zero 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 one percent of people. Like this is like a non-factor, uh, statistically speaking. Right. Uh, but yeah, but this particular sample, uh, contains a lot of idiots and, uh, these idiots went out into public spaces to protest the quarantine, self-isolation, whatever it is you want to call it. Yep. And, uh, now they may be idiots, but there is one sign that I thought was quite clever <laughs> for said idiots. Uh, one of them says COVID-19 or COVID-1984. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to find that one now. I, I noticed that one as, as well. There it is. COVID-19 or COVID-1984. Yeah. That's uh, that's clever. It's very clever, uh, but also very stupid. <laughs> Fucking stupid. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it is about retirement. And I, I, I guess I do know what it is about retirement. I just can't tolerate the stupidity of some people anymore. Not that I was ever really good at it, 
to be fair. Well, and so the thing is, it's, it's all about exposure, right? Because if you, if you look for stupidity, you're going to find stupidity. And if you don't want to be around stupidity, you just stay away from places that expose you to stupidity, basically, right? Fine. Then how do you explain, give me liberty or give me COVID-19? It <laughs> doesn't even make sense. <sighs> because yeah. the choice is to have liberty and COVID-19, not or. Like, right. he's right. basically stating that it's... <sighs> This is the current choice. You can have liberty and run around, or you can and 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 have COVID. No. I, so the so the so obviously it's riffing on give me liberty or give me death. So they're equating COVID nineteen to death. So what? Like it's not that's not the that's not the okay. How about yeah. don't cancel my golf season? And um, it doesn't show the person holding this flag, but I can only imagine they're a middle-aged white dude of at least some affluence. Like, golf. Fucking really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, the only, the only people that, that are even near, like within sight of the poverty line that can afford to golf are military members <laughs> because it's cheap as fuck to golf on a military base. On base, not off base, just on base. Yes, right. But other, outside of that, like, no, that's a privileged person. How about how about we demand haircuts? <laughs> like, dude, you weren't getting good haircuts before. Why the fuck would you expect them now? <laughs> I'm kind of digging on don't believe Bill Gates of hell. Oh, right, 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 right. Because that just like, what what are you what do you say? Like, this sign says a lot. <sighs> it's like Bill Gates of hell. It's like, are they saying that that? The man that we know is Bill Gates, the the founder of Microsoft. It he is like a a like a demon that originated in hell. Is that what they're saying? Um, or so, are they saying that the the you know the particular Bill Gates that happens to be from hell? Or is it? So does it have something to do with the belief? Like, don't believe Bill Gates about the thing of of, of hell. Like what? What are they actually saying with this? Yeah. I, okay. <laughs> in all fairness, I'm the one that wanted to put this in the show notes. I sent it to Kent and said, this is for the show tomorrow. Cause I wasn't in a place where I could just paste it in the show notes. I brought this up because there's just so much, so much to say about each one of these. So what I want to do now, I, I just, let's just scroll down, make one comment and just move on. We're starting at number eight, and this link will be in the show notes. Please, please, please. If you're listening on your iPod or uh, your iPhone or your iPad or whatever Android mechanism you have, um, I don't even know what they're fucking called anymore. Click on the link, look at these signs, and just make your own opinions and judgments about them and see if you can tell which one we're looking at when we're talking about these. So we're going to start at a random number in the middle. Video viewers can already see it, but we'll move on from there. This gentleman has a flagpole with a sign that says, Fight the Virus, Not the People, 10th New York State Mountain Division. He's wearing what appears to be a painter's ventilator. Yep. If he's so sure that what he wants is freedom, why is he still wearing a ventilator? So I, I think I think his his thinking here is that uh, don't keep us at the house if if we go out. out well, like, hey, Kent, the man is trying to keep you down. He's uh, he's <laughs> throttling your Skype. There we go. Yeah, see. That's what happens. Gosh, did I? There we go. Now you're back. Damn it, there Ted Skype. Damn it. Damn it, Ted Skype. <laughs> they, they, they were throttling your opinion, man. That's how strongly they feel about this shit. Tell yeah, us, so, so tell so, us about this dude again. Yeah. So, so basically, I mean, I guess I'm kind of, just kind of defending his his stance here. Uh, just basically saying that a lot. Of, I think a lot of the people say that. 
we can follow the CDC guidelines without mm-hmm. being mandated to stay in our homes. So if you follow the you know six foot distance rule, plus you wear a mask, um, you know, and, and you know, wash your hands often, disinfect, uh, hand sanitizer, the whole thing, right? Um, you can do all of those things and not be kept in your home. And I think that's what they're what they're trying to say is don't keep me locked up. I'll I'll wear the mask. I'll I'll do the things. I think that's what I think that's what his point is. All right, all right, fine. How about I oh, prefer but, I prefer dangerous why, freedom. Why he would call out his his military division, which I, I think is kind of a sketchy <laughs> claim anyway, uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, so I, I prefer dangerous freedom. Uh, yeah, so I've I've heard that a lot. That's a very right wing slogan. Uh, people. People on on the right of the spectrum when it comes to like freedom issues, like freedom versus regulation. So right. like regardless of what that is, like, you know, the I had the freedom of choice to do fill in the blank uh, versus regulations. So like a, a lot of like gun rights uh, folks will say this. Give me the right to own a gun knowing that like dangerous people are going to have a gun because I'll, I'll go ahead and take that gamble. Yeah. Uh, as long as I have that right, I'll take the gamble. Like it's a, it's a, a lot of, a lot of issues on the right, uh, refer to slogans like this. I prefer dangerous freedom. Um, so I think, I think this is definitely a, a, uh, right leaning, if not uh, far right person, uh, with this slogan. Um, I prefer to, choose to risk getting COVID-19 rather than telling me, rather than having you tell me that I am not allowed to get COVID-19. Fair enough. I'll give you that. How about this next one? Uh, What do we got? Fear is the real, fear is the real virus. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a backlash against uh, media, really like uh, government and media sources that, uh, a lot of people feel well. I think it, most people that feel this way, I think, are people that overconsume uh, news sources. Uh, they they feel that the media is is sowing fear uh, by reporting things like this nonstop. Well, my solution to that is uh, stop watching the fucking news. <laughs> I'm not afraid, and <clears throat> I think. Maybe one of those reasons is that I'm not watching the like I literally never watch the news, like literally never. I have news sources like I, I read certain sites, um, you know, on certain times during the day. And I do listen to certain current events type podcasts, uh, but I I'm not watching the news and I don't read Facebook. So. I stay away from the, the fear mongering, so I, I don't. I don't know. All right. How about this one? Land of the obedient, home of the enslaved. And then another sign that says facts over fear. And neither one of these people are standing six foot away from anybody. And neither one is wearing a mask and neither one is wearing gloves. They're basically taking no protective measures at all and carrying these signs. One of them, which is written on what appears to be an insulation panel with paper stapled to it. Yeah, so the, these folks I can tell right away are uh, definitely slaves to the uh, confirmation bias fallacy. <laughs> I haven't gotten it, so nobody can get it. Yeah, so well, not only that, like they choose to to look at statistics that that matter to them. So, uh, an often cited statistic on the right is the number of recovered or percentage of recovered. Uh, people from from COVID nineteen, and they use that as their justification for you know if if ninety eight percent of the people that get this uh, you know, uh, you know recover fully with no no uh, long term implications then why why do the media only talk about the other numbers why aren't they talking about the ninety eight percent so in their closed uh, ecosphere and they're constantly getting 
you know, confirmation bias for those things. We should be paying attention to the 98% versus the, and I might be wrong about 98%, but it's high 90s, right? Um, but yeah, so like B. Cover said, who cares if the two if two percent of people die, right? Right. It's it's, but it's yes that, but it's even deeper than all of that. And like, if you seriously think facts over fear, choose your fucking sources better so that you're not afraid. You can choose facts over fear, like by choosing facts over fear, and still comply with stay at home orders and stuff like that. Like. I, it makes no goddamn sense. But right. this is total confirmation bias fucking uh, at work right here. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the rest of them to, to viewers to see on their own. Let us know what you think is your favorite <laughs> sign and how you interpret it. Uh, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Send us your emails. Let us know. Uh, give us as much detail on the photo and your opinion as possible. And we will re- revisit uh, next time we yeah. uh, we come back if we get a re- nobody ever nobody ever emails us like all these calls to action nobody ever does the thing so uh, maybe you not be a hey, jerk and fucking email prove, us about the prove, thing. Prove Amos wrong. Uh, Amos is full of shit. Prove prove it to him. Yeah. Be, be the one that that emails with a detailed. Uh, I'm so full of shit. Ken's eyes are brown. <laughs> prove Amos wrong. Uh, podcast at Richard I actually don't know what color your eyes are. I think they're brown, but they could be fucking green for all I know. My my eyes are actually hazel. <laughs> yeah, same here, but they tend more on the green side. See, I don't fucking know. That's how full of shit I am. Prove me yeah. wrong. Podcast at ritualmisery.com. E- email us. Exactly. <clears throat> um, hey, dude, uh, we, I want to talk. I want to I wanna, I wanna very specifically talk to you more about the uh, coronavirus and stuff like that in the post show. But I mean, we don't need to be doing all that right now. What I would like to do right now is what if you've heard all this and you see all this and you know you're, you're, you're like, this is a bunch of bullshit and they're not on my political side or they're, you know, they're trying to skew the information or no, they're right. And these people shouldn't have these signs and blah, blah, like whatever, whatever your opinion might be. I know a way that you can fucking help. And if COVID-19 isn't your thing, like say you're like, you know what? COVID-19 is dumb. Alzheimer's, that's where we need to be putting some effort. I have a fucking solution for you. Oh, get out of here. What 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 would that be, Amos? Have you ever heard of folding at home? I have heard of it, but I didn't hear about it before like an hour and a half ago when I looked at the show notes. <laughs> Basically, so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the, 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 the really layman's bullshit terms for everything. Proteins, they make everything possible. All of life happens because proteins are special. Proteins are also bad because they are what forms most uh, most the, the, the reaction agents in viruses and uh, uh, bacterias. Well, we know what chemical composites they, these proteins are and we know where they belong and what they do, but we don't know what shape they're going to take. And the shape is all of it. it the shape determines their function. And for viruses, if we can determine their, their shape, we can stop their function. You get what I'm going with here? I think I follow. Okay. So if we can figure out how to stop them from shaping the way that they want to shape, we can stop them from virusing the way they want to virus. I don't think any of those terms actually exist, but fuck off. So <laughs> folding at home is literally a way for you to use your computer power at home to sacrifice some electricity in order to run a simulation on your local computer. And then that simulation, so they download the data from, from Stanford or whatever college it is that's currently running it. Right now it's it's um, university in uh, Washington University in St. Louis School of Medicine. But they download the information from there your computer runs a simulation, which takes all this computer power. Like it's not low key stuff. It runs your processor or your graphics card pretty high for like an hour, two hours, four hours. And then once it figures out exactly how that, that, um, or one way that that protein might fold and what function it might have, it sends that information back up to the university. And then they compile all the information to figure out how they can try to stop the virus. Well, you can do this at home for free. Just go to foldingathome.org. And if you're going to do that, if you want to help out, if you want to make magic fucking happen, go there, foldingathome.org. It can be done on a cell phone. It can be done on a laptop. It can be done on a gaming computer, which is better because it's got more processing power. 
Um, you're literally spending a little extra on your power bill in order to help research. It matters. They're researching Alzheimer's. They're reaching, uh, researching multiple sclerosis. Right now, if you just go in the, uh, I don't want to specify, it's going to start researching COVID-19. And look up team number 261830. That's 261830. That is the Good Day Internet, a.k.a. DTNS, a.k.a. Merit Militia folding team, the GDI folding team. Right now, we have completed 1,601 simulations. We have approximately 43 people on the simulation team. So it's not even that big. And we're already, last time I checked, we were 4,007th place of teams all time in the world. So if you've got some computer power to spare, you're not using a second computer like I'm not, and you don't mind a, a, a couple of dollars on your uh, electric bill, folding a home, it's really easy to set up. It's really easy to sign up, everything else. And you could, you don't never know. You could be the computer that solves the equation the folding equation that's necessary to actually create an antiviral for COVID-19. That can be you. That would be a, a heroic thing. Um, yeah. Freaking hell. Yeah. If you've got the extra computing power, check it out. It is uh folding at home, uh, dot Stanford dot EU yep. edu. Sorry. And, uh, once again, the team ID is two, six, one, eight, three, zero. And you can go to ritualmisery.com slash F a H folding at home F A H and that'll bring you to our team stat oh, yeah. page. That's even better. That's even better. Ritualmisery.com slash F A H for folding at home. Yep. And there. uh yeah, I've got my Mac my 10 year old Mac Mini crunching away on shit full power, uh, because it barely uses any power anyway. And it's already just in the two days it's been sitting there, it's already solved three um simulation equations, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you never know which one will be the solution to an antiviral for, uh, well, I mean, it wouldn't be an antiviral, but a solution to Alzheimer's, to, to the protein deposits in Alzheimer's, to COVID-19, to any of these other diseases that are all protein-based. We don't know. We don't know which one will do it, but yours could. So sp oh, yeah. spend a couple of dollars on your power bill and help humanity as a whole. Hell yeah. RitualMisery.com slash F-A-H. Amos if you are going to go viral sometime in the future, how can someone follow that occurrence? Uh, they'd probably find it when I posted it from the shitter on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. How about you, if you man? If you want to follow me, I am R M underscore Del Noche on Twitter, but pretty much everywhere else on the internet, I'm either Del Noche or Del, Del Noche 77. Deuce Gone Wild cheered another 100 bits. Very, very, very much thank you. Apparently, for the leaderboards to be active now, you have to have at least three people cheering at least 100 bits within five minutes. So I don't know if that's a thing we can do, but uh, we keep getting that's there. A, yeah, that's a, I, th I think that's like how a hype train starts. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, we'll figure it out, and uh, we keep getting the bits. We'll make that shit happen, too. So... Uh, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter, R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-R-Y, or just cruise on to RitualMisery.com to find all links, all show notes, and everything else having to do with basically any project that Kent and I are allowed to talk about us being on. And if you want some of the inside sauce on that stuff, go over to Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Join our conversation over there. You get uh, access to early looks at things. You get... Um, a, a chance to be a part of the show, in fact. Um, and if you're a patron yeah. and a Discord, we have a group specifically for you that's a direct line to Kent and I that we will... You you, you are free to uh, post in there at any time you want, day or night, and we guarantee that we will ignore you for at least three hours before replying. <laughs> because we suck at Discord, but we're both trying harder. <laughs> you don't get that guarantee everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. This is special for, for patron Discords. <laughs> oh, we are live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. And as far as I know, we're still carried on diamondclub.tv. 
I believe we are. And we would like to thank uh, Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use the music, his music all these years. We've been using his music for years, and he's awesome. Got a documentary coming out soon, but that's that's all there is to there. Thank you so much uh, for you, for listening, for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! You have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. Boom! That's a show. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Curtis says that was loud. Yeah, it was loud as fuck on this end too. Look, you couldn't hear it. Now you can fucking hear it. All right. I don't know. I don't know what you want. What you want from me? <laughs> he, says, he says, "Thank fuck, I'm not wearing headphones." Um, uh, well, if, if it matters at all, I'm wearing headphones and it's loud as fuck for me too. So, yeah. all right. <laughs> at least you didn't suffer alone, Curtis. Uh, uh, right, hey, uh, I, uh, real quick, real quick. I do apologize for the audio issues. If anybody did this, uh, feel any distress from any of the audio issues, that is all on me, and I do apologize.